Okay, hi. The purpose of this video is for me to show you how we use all these materials to do the Henry George International Education Center program. So, um, let's see what I can do here, a step at a time. First, I'm going to start off with we started with uh, we would get our people together, with volunteers, and uh, look over the possible programs we could do, or any and everything. We've had, we've been on TV, we had radio program in the past with the Institute of Henry George, which was 2000 to 210, and then 210 to 216 with the Henry George Center. And we did all kinds of projects that along the way, trying to promote Georgism in Nicaragua, promote our activities and our activities to promote other activities. So we would first uh, look at uh, classes, workshops, seminars, programs, investigation, publications, demonstrative projects, uh, and uh, then try to work with these things and work up to what we could do feasibly in the year and this would be our program development plan that we would come up with, which would be on a timeline specifically putting goals and being updated to show what we had accomplished during the year. So in this particular one, uh, fiscal year July 4, 2014, June 2015, uh, various courses and activities and uh, some statistics of how we performed. Day-to-day -day basis, had to uh, run a legal nonprofit organization registered in the United States and Nicaragua. And uh, these are some of the reporting, the monthly reporting that we had to do to the local government here with receipts and uh, spreadsheets and things like this that we had to keep reporting on a monthly basis. We have various projects that I can show here. Uh, this is just a general uh, attendance sheet for ones that I don't have specifically in their own folder. These are just meeting sheets. You can see how many you know, people of our members who would come to our meetings. This was uh, says a oral this was a, a, a workshop chat. So we have in, uh, here some of the stuff we talked about on it. Activities I'll go through right now. Um, we had a project, uh, uh, it's called the Laguna de Tescapa project, where we were trying to propose a development plan for a volcanic lagoon using Georgia's incentives, where there would be and local laws which existed for investment without taxation and the, the government collecting the rent. The government didn't want it. Uh, this is an activity which was more like open to the public about uh, controversial issues. And we uh, had all these uh, people participating in this one. This is about uh, right, human rights and women's rights issues. Although the perspective was not pro-feminist, this was actually challenging the feminist perspective. But it was a, uh, had a great debate, very well controlled. Both sides got to say what they wanted to say. This is a workshop uh, on uh, employment. So we did an employment workshop for our participants, get them in, you know, something to do to come in to participate. We were offering these value-added kind of things. Uh, English class for our members. I'll talk about our membership, how we got to members later. This is our uh, English attendance sheets, for instance. For an English class, which we would get free to our members. 
and then I'll talk about how we get to members later on in the video. This was a project to try to bring together people from the Atlantic coast where they have de, de facto understanding of common property because it's indigenous tradition. Never got that one off the ground. A lot of our efforts were trying to get things going and not all of them got going. Uh, just general um, publicity. This was a make a mock-up for a cartoon book. Didn't have the budget to do that at the time. That, that didn't get published. And this one is a print ad. And sometimes we put in print ads into the local newspaper. This is saying the economic solution for Nicaragua, a single tax on the value of land and natural monopolies. And these are a series of more art of articles, op-ed articles, that were published in the local newspapers over the years, put into a binder. And we have one project here where we uh, did some surveying. So here's the actual survey sheet that the volunteers used. We used volunteer work in our program. And these are the people, these are the people who attended. And the sign-up sheet of the people who attended to do this activity, which was very successful. Here's the result of that. all the sheets that got filled out, some hundreds of sheets, of survey sheets that were of the survey that was taken. And then that was tabulated and we used that information uh, whenever as you know a way to convince or persuade people about what we're talking about. And that would mean in the same class as well, in our in our classroom as well. And we could build on that with each class, actually. We took a mini survey within each class for the same topics and started to build uh, visual graphs. And we have all that. And everything I'm talk talking about, we have digital, and it's also, much of it is online as well on our website, which, which is ceihg.org, still in existence. Even though we're not functioning, the website is still up. Well, the website is still up there. OK, so moving on to the. Our main activity was our understanding economics or comprender la economia course. And so we started out by looking at a uh, strategy plan. We sat down, did some brainstorming. This is, is a photograph off the whiteboard, looking at public and registration, the course, graduation, the whole, looking at the whole global management of our course, not what, getting people in doing the course and then what we would do with the people afterwards to get them to, come, to continue on with Georgia. So here's our administrative plan, another timeline. I love to use timelines to make it real for a, a course, our 55th course, and I'm going to show how we went through that. So we have planning stages, execution, and post-course activities and go with that. Uh, we started trying to teach, to train teachers. Here's a, here's a schedule sheet for a couple of weeks of uh, participation by some teacher trainees to give our famous Comprender la Economia, which is Understanding Economics course. By the way, uh, this all was designed on the basis of Lindy Davies Understanding Economics course and then we took it to the next level as he took his to the next level in English. Because here we're you know, down here in Managua, Nicaragua, with the Central George. So how did we do this course? How did we get this thing going? We started out by putting a classified ad, and we're putting the popular, most popular paper. They allowed us to put it in the employment section, because we would be offering people volunteer work as a result of their participation in this course. So we kept that going for about two to three weeks, probably three weeks lead time. And that will be scheduled here on our plan. 
And we also use a weekly publication where we put in a space uh, print ad here. And this was something that was uh, you could pick up in, in the malls and the supermarkets. When I could, I would go on to television, and this is my little public relations kit that I would uh, take with me, so I could put up to the camera some visuals. The date of the course that was kind of come up. I had some other materials for my reference. And I have recordings of my interviews on uh, many of my interviews on DVD. Some of them are on, out there on YouTube, not on my channel. Someone else put them up. So we use print, advertising, television. We also try to go on radio when that was possible. But uh, another mainstay for us was putting out flyers. And we put out thousands and thousands of flyers. We had that quantified uh, in some, we have that uh, in the database spreadsheet somewhere, also in our, digi in our digital uh, records, files. We started out by, and of course since we've been doing this for years, we kind of know where we're going to go, but we make sure we have a plan of where we're going to go using a, a map, let's say. We use volunteer, volunteer help for this. So we have our volunteers that are signing in and getting hours in which they would get uh, volunteer stipend paid, paid uh, for about a dollar an hour. So we had the volunteers, they would come in and start, uh, we print up a whole bunch of uh, posters with little ta uh, tags on them that people could take individually and we get people to hand color all these. And we also had these little flyers here that could be handed out individually, we'd often do that. And they would also put up as many posters with the little tags that people could take, hand colorized. Uh, we would call, have somebody start calling up all of the places that we might want to put up flyers which needed, which needed permission, like universities. And we would be faxing them and emailing them these, and going in person to get stamped permission letters because as time went on, access became more and more difficult. So we had to do more, more and more finesse on that thing. And we kept records of everything. These are day by day uh, where people went to put out flyers, what kind of flyers, what they took out of inventory, who did it. So this is for this particular course that we're looking at now. And we kept an inventory, so we knew where things were going, what weren't. We were able to keep people a little bit honest and see how many things were going out there. So we had our advertising going. One big thing later on, in the last few years, we had everything online. So in our ad, it would say you can get your application online, or you can come to the office, to our office, to get your application. So those were the two options. When we started putting out all this publicity, we immediately became ready to hand out applications. We have an administrative guide, which is actually many pages now. This is a summary that we put on the wall of the place of near the entrance of where we're attending people. We had to be mindful of security. We attend people uh, on the at the entrance, make sure that they're legitimate coming for the course, and uh, control the situation, have them come in. And we follow these, uh, this procedure here. This one has, says uh, new applications, intermediate people are coming for a second time. We had people who come to uh, apply for a second time, but they'd have to get the, uh, the application. We have this sheet here, which later which uh, is by columns. This is like a survey of who's coming, and we would get their, uh, their telephone number, their email, with their permission to send them uh, follow-up information. We would ask them some basic demographic questions about you know who they were, and, and then we took every day we were tabulating 
who is coming, and we have this also on a database or a spreadsheet, and or a spreadsheet, probably a spreadsheet, of how, what kind of reaction we're getting in every corpse, so we could see what days people are coming, and just graph it out, and you help, that, help us plan the best times to do these activities. We would give everybody who came an application like this if they hadn't already printed it out. So they would get their application and we would tell them, read all this information along with the brochure of the Henry George Center, which is about the center and about Georgism. And we said, take this information, go and study it, make sure that you really want to take this course. And if you want to take the course, you come back and you bring the equivalent of probably three dollars and we will give you your materials and register you for the course. When people came back, or when they came the first time having gotten it off the internet, and that was the advantage of getting it off the internet, they didn't have to come the first time, so they could show up. And this is an application that was online, and maybe you can see, it says online down here, the other ones say uh, office or something. And uh, so they would come, they'd have to ha include a copy of their identification card, which we cut out and, and stapled up top. We would use this key, this would be on the wall as well, and, and the person attending would take the application and then they would correct all the questions on the application. These were just basic questions that you could in, get the answer from by probably reading the information on the application itself and the brochure. So we're trying to get an idea what kind of ability these people have to analyze information and uh, respond to, to, a, to a test, let's say. So we would qualify them. This person got a 6.5 out of a possible, I think it's 15 or something, I don't, I'm not quite sure. And uh, what we could do if we had a lot of applications, like in the early days, we could give preference to the people who qualified on the higher level and then as it went down with other people later in the second week or so invite them to, to register. We could do that by email, emailing them probably mostly by calling. We did continuous calling of people off this list here. If we're not having a good turnout, we'd say, okay, we need your, you're not registering people, so use your time by calling people. So we did a lot of calling on the phone to follow up. And so these are all these applications for this course in uh, Fe uh, February, March of 2015, people who came. And these are not all the graduates. This is people who did not graduate all, all at the superior level. Maybe some of them are graduates intermediate. I'm not quite sure how we did that. Probably the intermediates are still in here. And the basic levels, as there was three levels, the superior level people who are qualified to go on to the postgraduate activities, they're filed somewhere else. So they came in, we gave them their application, they come back, we received their money, we write, we write the pertinent information, if they handed in an application, here's one that says, with, uh, and actually registered, they had to buy their text to register, so here's one that says the date, two text, uh, that means they registered, this is a registered person, and they would get entered into, yes, the database, based upon the information that was on our initial survey and based on their mostly on their application. Yeah, of course, because uh, yeah, the, this information was also on here, so we would just use their application. Once they had paid and were registered, we would give them a copy of our Progress and Poverty Progressive Misteria text. This is the fifth edition. I'm going to go over the materials uh, separately because they're so uh, important to know about. So we give them a copy of that, and a copy of the study guide that goes along with that, which is called Understanding Economics. This is the 2015, the last edition we made as well, with all kinds of visuals, visual intensive, example intensive, and we gave them their syllabus, their study plan, which is the orientation to the course, on the first page, and then the course plan, the syllabus itself, with the with the readings on every and the dates, uh, the number of the course, the number of the class on the second page. 
And then we did, we were always, you know, being very organized. We would file the applications. This actual last course had a night course and an afternoon and a night course. And then we had one for people who were just not registered. Those are the ones that felt maybe checked on at the end, which wasn't here. And we kept everything for each course. And we have for each course it's a file that has all these materials that were used in, in the file. There's even some more that have also the class control and the didactic materials in here too, which is the next part of the video. And we kept, this is a little handmade one, but kept a track every day of the money and entered that every day also into a spreadsheet to, for control. So all this stuff was very well organized, controlled, and we were able to do a lot with a little resource because we were an expert on what we were doing and kept, uh, and kept things flowing. Everything lead, led into something else. The publicity led into the, into the registration, into the people getting their texts, and on and on at the class. It was seamless that one thing stepped into another. Okay. Continuing from the previous section or the previous video, as the case may be, uh, we showed with these materials here the general activity of the Henry George Center in Nicaragua, administration, how we did planning, and then how we managed the course and we got how we got people to come register and they would buy their text take their plan course plan, we'd orient them, and so that they would show up on time to class on the, uh, usually the Monday that the class would start. So this video here, I'm gonna show how we manage the class itself, from all of the nuts and bolts. Okay. So basically, people had to show up on time at the entrance. This is, our, this is what was our classroom, now it's got some rooms in it, but it was a large classroom before. Uh, at, the, at the entrance, we had someone there who had everybody's name and uh, information and they would have to show their ID or uh, to be able to then get checked off for being in attendance. They would come up to the classroom and they'd have to come to the reception table where they would again get checked off. So we had a double checking system for attendance. You know, it's important because if you miss too many classes, you no longer could continue. And it was just very few, maybe even like two classes you missed, you could no longer continue. So uh, people had their texts, and I want to, I want to show the texts. Uh, this is uh, Progress and Poverty, Progresso y Miseria, 15th edition. Uh, it included even some. Uh, some visuals, previous text did not, and the other four, this is up here, uh, three before that, three editions before that, fifth edition. This is our study guide, oh wait, before I go on, uh, this is the teacher's guide, and it's the same as the other ones, except that the teacher is going to be marking in the book where sections that go along with our teacher guide. And this is the teacher guide, and it's pretty extensive and detailed. It controls the time. It tells exactly what materials are going to be used, what visuals we're projecting. By the way, we're using projection. And in the olden days, we used these things visually held up, and then that all became digitized. I should also mention, which I forgot in the other video, that we also made uh, these kind of... Uh, signs that would be hanging hang up in front and around, around town as well. Getting back to the Via Didactica, the, uh, the teacher guide. So for every class, there's one of these, and it uh, controlled the time, it controlled the material, and so the teacher would coordinate that by marking this book as where those breaks would occur. And it was very important to control the time because at the end of the class, and especially in the night classes, people had to run to get their buses because the buses stopped running 
about 15 minutes before the end or after the end of our class. So it was very time sensitive in that way. Then we have Comprender la Economia, Understanding Economics, which is the study guide. This is uh, also the 215 edition with the most updated visuals and explanations, calculations, graphs, and all that kind of stuff. Very wonderful material. And uh, these are the four versions before that. So here we are with our latest versions and the study guide and the teacher guide. Very important, this teacher guide, in making the class work. And that related to all the other materials. So we'll go on, let's go on to the materials now. These are handouts. Uh, and they came on different, different kind of times in class. Uh, there are some that are just standard. It says class one and class four. So these are the calculation handouts here. Uh, this is class five. More calculation handouts to help calculate law of rent and law of salaries and things like this, law of wages. Um, class six, more of those first half of the course calculations to help people understand and put credibility, uh, critical credibility to what we're showing about the law of rent. And here's one for class nine with examples uh, of tax examples. Now those are just a few of the uh, basic ones that we handed out. Here are some more handouts here. Uh, this is uh, an exercise we did at the beginning to do with definitions. Just people on definitions. This is like an uh, in-house exercise that people like to. It's kind of fun. And uh, this is it goes at the end. This is the uh, the Cent Cent Henry George Center uh, proposal for a tax reform. And that goes at the end of the, we gave, handed this out at the end of the class. So this is actually a separate thing. We would hand this to a government people if they were interested. You say, we've got, we have a proposal. So we have the, the single tax proposal right there all written up with examples and, and different stages and things like this. Uh, this is an example in class. We took an actual tax bill and showed how land can be valued separately from improvements. And we talked about the Nicaraguan Constitution and where in the Constitution the Constitution is in agreement with the principles of the single land tax with common land being common property, things like uh, that go along with our course and with the thesis of Henry George. We had a series, three series of homework. These are take-home homeworks, homework and the final exam that was done, no, without a book, with uh, up around 100 questions at the end for your final qualification. But these are all take-home, so people got to practice uh, with these take-home tests. And uh, they could find all the answers in the text that was part of the class, so there's nothing you know, to be divined. And by doing these, they prepare themselves for just basically a repeat without the book in the final exam. And uh, it was not that, that difficult. Many people were able to score high and become superior level graduates. And we had also intermediate, and we had basic. And at the superior level, which was above 80%, then they could go on to the next stage of the postgraduate program, which was the Georgia's Community Fund membership group. Towards the end of the class, um, I should say with the materials, uh, for the exams, now we have a series of materials. And uh, a lot of stuff is projected. That was in the study guide. The study guide has all these materials right here, of course, all the examples here. And that was projected during class. And we, have, we drew upon uh, many uh, articles that we cut out uh, ongoing on an ongoing basis and use in the class from time to time bring out contemporary examples. And we also took citations, read citations from local authors and uh, national figures who, uh, unbeknownst to them, were explaining something about what was going on in our course. We used the Land Value Taxation book, all about taxes in Nicaragua, and uh, 
the works of famous uh, nationalist uh, uh, Sandino, for whom the Sandinista party is named, where he is expressing his uh, desire for Nicaragua to be sovereign and to be owner of its own land, things like that. And we, towards the end of the class, the end of the course, we would just pass around this petition, of which, uh, as a result, people would sign this saying they they're, have studied and are in agreement with the proposal of Henry George. And uh, there's some uh, visual classes of the people. Uh, they would, so they would get this thing, and then they would uh, sign their name, saying they're in agreement with it. We, there was no pressure, it had nothing to do with their grade or anything like that. The petition of the Henry George Center, part of the class experience. Uh, as far as the uh, homework went, we offered uh, two, at the, in, the, in the last part, last phase of our teaching, uh, last few couple of years, we offered uh, workshops where students could come in and they could, uh, in a study, it was a study group, that's what it was, a study group, like twice a week during the class. So we made it incredibly, uh, not, not easy, but uh, not difficult for people to be able to pass the course and not pass it by like just letting them do it, but by helping them earn it. And so when they finally did get a certificate, and I don't have a certificate to show, when they finally did get a certificate, it was a very meaningful document for them. And that's what we would say, is that you have earned this document, and people have tried in having those documents, having that certificate. So, I just say uh, that there were three sets of these. Um, this is the, the A set, there was a B and a C set, so that people could not uh, cheat from class to class by, use, by using someone else's exam from a previous uh, class or, or a test, I should say. And uh, a very, a very uh, authentic and uh, respectful, credible uh, process, this, this whole course. People uh, actually had to study, they had to learn. If they didn't uh, participate adequately, they would probably drop out. So it was a self-correcting, a self-filtering uh, class situation and worked very well. Okay, so with the previous videos or section of this video, we showed the general Henry George Center administrative process. We showed how the planning and execution of the offering of the course went. We showed the process of the, co of the course, and now we're getting to where we're graduating people. So people who have scored 80% or more then become uh, superior level graduates. And so here we have a folder from 2008. This is before the Georgia's Community Fund postgraduate program was found, uh, founded. So this folder is full of all these uh, superior level graduates here. And then we have evaluations as well from everybody who, whatever level. And this, is the, this is the feedback form for our program that we, we received, the evaluation form. So you have the final folder with the application and the evaluation and the grade of the superior level people. Now, uh, starting in a few, I, I don't know exactly the year, but uh, let's say, it was about four or five years in the works. So um, when people would graduate, then they could become members of the Georgia's Community Fund. But uh, we would have our, and it's on our photos on the website, we would have a little party where we do our skit, private property skit, where we would encircle a bunch of chairs and uh, people come in, they go, where do I sit? And you say, well, sorry, pro pro private property, you can't sit there. We'd have an owner with a sign saying he's an owner. A little skit there. And then we would hand out and give prizes uh, like the Henry George books, such as these ones here in Spanish. And uh, so we would then offer people the opportunity to become members of the Georgia's Community Fund. And to do that, well, here's a, here's a pool from our folder. This is, these are the Georgia's Community Fund members up until the end. There are almost 200 members. And uh, so here's one. 
where the person, they, they read out loud and then would sign, fill in and sign the uh, declaration of membership, where they had to accept the membership and what it meant. And this is also on the web, everything's on the website here. So I would receive it, and then uh, this is uh, another of the same. And the reason is because the membership lasted year to year. So here's the original application of this person, and they scored uh, enough to be a superior level graduate. This is their evaluation and their original declaration. After the year period, they would have to take an exam. So we have uh, a qualifying exam that they'd have to take again to keep their membership. And here's a one right here. This is a blank of the exam. We had two of them, two or three, three of those. And if they qualified, and of course we would give workshops and any kind of help to help people be able to pass their exam, which was not a very high qualification, I think it was 75% maybe. Uh, we did institute giving uh, membership cards, which was nice. So you could have your George's Community Fund membership card. And we had meetings. The, real, the, way, the purpose of the group was to be a group. So, uh, for instance, here's our, and we kept attendance of all the meetings. Some more better attended than others throughout the months and years. In the meetings, uh, we, here's a, a material. This is the uh, progress and Progressive Missouri, Progress in Poverty, 2012, a super condensed version of Progress in Poverty that goes cross-referenceable with the abbreviated guide uh, text and with the original text. So this is what that is, and we would be able to read uh, maybe a chapter of this at a meeting and open it for discussion. We always would read this, the manifesto of the, of the group, you can see how simple it is, declaring the current system of a political economy dysfunctional and proposing the single land value tax. Kind of like our article of consensus among the group, and that's exactly what it was. At the end of the year, we would have a celebration of the, uh, and we would distribute as a demonstrative activity, this is the attendance for 2015. You can see the pictures on the website. We would distribute the annual dividend, which would come out of the Georgia's Community Fund, where members could voluntarily contribute to this fund and at the end of the year, it would be divided amongst everybody as a way of kind of play acting, seeding an understanding of what we're talking about by the distribution of rent being a communal value and whatnot. And so you have to, I have to explain that a little more, but that's not the purpose of this video. So we kept the records of all these meetings and who was coming and going and kept people current with their membership. And the purpose was just to be a group just to come to meetings, keep your membership up, come to meetings, keep your membership, come to meetings, and by gravity, have a larger and larger group that someday would be able to have a political voice to be able to propose the land value tax in Nicaragua or elsewhere. One other material of progress and poverty was that we would at the end, after the, the, as we were finishing up our time, was the recorded version of the abbreviated text. So this is the uh, what the readers were looking at when they were reading. That is the audio book. And that's pretty much how we finished. We had this entire program where we could 
you know, bringing in people, educating them, giving them a place to be and a way to express their desire for Georgism, and creating ever more materials that were accessible to people to be able to read Progress in Poverty and understand it at whatever level of brevity or just listening to it, to reinforce, to, to learn it. And that was the purpose of the Henry George Center. Wildly successful, unfortunately the paradigm was so outside the box of, of what has been done in the Georgia's community for so long, people couldn't just understand that just by having a membership organization and building it and building it and building it, without doing any radical actions or making you know movies or anything necessarily dramatically, but just having more and more real people getting together and, and saying, we want Georgia's and we want Georgia's. That was our paradigm. And people just couldn't, couldn't be patient, let's say, or didn't see the importance of that low-key, but constant, constant advancement. So we, at the end, we ended it, but the, uh, because of lack of resources and lack of active participation, especially from our sponsors in the north, but uh, we have still all this structure, all these materials that are available, and now we have a new generation of people uh, who are these uh, graduates from before who have come to me in, as the ex-director of the George's Center, saying, of the Henry George Center here in Nicaragua, saying, we wanted to pick this up again and keep going. So I want to document all this for everybody to see. We have it on digital, we have it on the website. This is a living program that can be dropped right out the back of the truck in any country, in any language, and will work perfectly well as long as the people understand the, the reality of how you actually build an organization that has a political voice.